What if I need to work in Digital Performer with audio that has no embedded tempo information? DP provides a range of options to deal with this situation. We'll start with a simple example. I'll import a loop, and you can see right away that the loop doesn't line up with the bar lines in the sequence timeline. If I select the loop and choose Adjust Sound Bytes to Sequence Tempo, nothing happens. That's because there is no previously embedded tempo information in the loop. I can see that in the Sound File Information window. If I play the loop, I can hear it's a two-bar phrase. If I want to conform this loop to the current sequence tempo, I can hold down the Command key to snap to grid and just drag the loop to the correct bar line. I'll turn on the DP metronome and you can hear that the loop is playing at the correct sequence tempo. I'll undo the time stretch and try a different technique. Because I know this loop is two bars long, I'll go to the Audio menu, Sound Byte Tempo, Set Sound Byte Tempo. I'll type in 8 beats for the length, and now you can see the DP has calculated the sound bite tempo based on the length. Now with the sound bite selected, I can choose Adjust Sound Bites to Sequence Tempo, and DP correctly conforms the audio. It's also possible to have DP automatically detect the tempo of audio. I'll delete the sound bite from the sequence and start again. In order for DP to find tempo in audio, it must first analyze the audio for beats. I'll go to the Digital Performer Preferences and enable the Background Processing Preferences to automatically look for beats and tempo in audio. Now I'll drag in a soundbite that previously did not have any embedded tempo information. DP has already done the work of finding beats and tempo for this audio. I'll open the soundbite in the Waveform Editor and click on the Beats tab. You can see the beats that DP has detected. If I click on the Tempo tab, you can see the automatically detected tempo. Since DP now knows the tempo of this audio, it's an easy thing to conform the sequence tempo and soundbite tempo together. For my last example, I'll disable the automatic beat and tempo detection preferences. The reason I do this is that if I'm doing a lot of tracking, I don't need that detection going on in the background while I work. I can always find beats and tempo only when I need that information. I'm going to drag in multiple tracks of audio. This audio represents a multi-track recording session. The good news is that there is a click track, although I don't know the tempo of the click, and the click does not line up with the bar lines in the DP sequence timeline. I'm going to set DP to be under the control of the conductor track. The conductor track allows for tempo changes in the sequence timeline. I'll line up the first click with the first available bar line. I want to keep all the tracks lined up, so I select all and drag until that first click is lined up. Now I'll command double click on the click audio to open in the waveform editor. I'll click on the beats tab, select all, and choose find beats in selection from the beats menu. I'll click on the tempo tab and choose analyze sound bite tempo from the tempo menu. DP calculates the audio tempo based on the found beats. In the Sequence Editor, I select the Click Audio and choose Adjust Sequence Tempo to Sound Bytes. The DP bar lines now line up with the audio. I'll play the audio back with the DP metronome, and you can hear that everything is in sync. I'll select all the audio and choose Copy Sequence Tempo to Sound Bytes. Now all the multi-track audio has the correct embedded tempo information. Once DP has accurate tempo information for audio, we get accurate bar lines in the sequence timeline, we can conform other audio or MIDI to the sequence, we can quantize MIDI and audio, and we can even accurately change the tempo of the audio. In the next video, we'll look at how to find tempo for more complex audio, such as when there is no click or obvious beats, or there are subtle changes in the audio tempo.